Hi and welcome to New Hope. I pray that you have had a week in which you have found peace and solace within your soul. So many of us are hurting and we're angry and we're disappointed and we're protesting and our minds are laid steady on the injustices of the world. So I want you to be safe if you are protesting. And I want you to know that the church never goes silent in times of struggle. And it seems that there's always a struggle, but there's always the voice and the advocacy and the hope of the church. So we are here. We are here to help, we are here to serve, and we are here to advocate for greater justice and peace in the world. And right now, we're here to rejuvenate ourselves in worship. Tonight's going to be great, as we, of course, have communion. It was so good to see you this afternoon as you came to the drive-by communion. And if you didn't come, it's okay. You can use any of the elements in your home to share in this sacred time. And then we have greetings from around the way. Our friends around the nation and the world come in to say hello. And of course, we've started a new segment called Soul Stories. And tonight, we're glad to be able to hear the soul-stirring story of Mr. John Walton. Well, friends, it's time to come together and worship in the Lord. God bless you.
Greetings, my dear family at New Hope Presbyterian Church. It is your friend and your sister in Christ, Dr. Victoria Morris. I am the president of the Orange County Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and I also serve as the director for professional development at California State University East Bay Campus. Thank you for the opportunity to offer you humble greetings. I pray that each of you are safe and that you're well and I look forward to the time when we can be together again so that we can love, live, learn, and pray together. Some of the most outstanding qualities that I took away from just being in the presence of your wonderful congregation was a spirit of love, community, inclusiveness, and true hearers and doers of God's Word. In these times that we're living in, you may have to depend on those same qualities to get you through what lies ahead. But surely, I mean surely, as Jesus got up on that third day, I know we're going to get through this together. So let's praise him now, for the victory has already been won. But until we see each other again, my dear family, I pray health, I pray wellness, I pray peace on you and your families. Mova sape, which in my native language means thank you. God bless you all. I love you all. Please stay connected with me as I am connected with you. And I pray that you will continue to do God's word and his work. Thank you. I love you all. We are the one we are. 
Father, hear the prayers of your people. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, that we can see you through your eyes versus seeing you through our own eyes, Lord God. For our eyes get clouded by doubt, fear, and all the other things that we can see. But seeing you through your eyes sees new possibilities, new ways of thinking, new relationships, ways of strengthening who we are in you. Opportunities that no one can stop, Lord God. These are the things that we can see through your eyes. And so we pray, Father, that as we go throughout our day, that we would focus on you and not focus on the things that seem so obvious to us. We pray, Father, for protection. We pray, Father, for love, for peace, for a deep-rooted joy, Lord God, that comes along with knowing you. We pray, Father, that our strength will be stronger than ever, that our faith would be steadfast, Lord God, that our faith would deepen, that our faith would be everlasting, for we know, Lord, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We know, Father, that there is nothing that can separate us from your love. And so we pray, Father, that even right now, that we would experience your loving embrace and that all would be well with our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to share Gospel Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Listen for the word of the Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Boy, it is so great to have the children share the word of God with us. In times like this, it's just wonderful to hear them bringing God's message to us. And one of the things that was lifted up was that in the final chapter of Matthew's gospel, our risen Christ is giving his final instructions to the disciples. And in the midst of all that he had to say, he gives them a couple of words of, of I would call assurance and encouragement when he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And surely I am with you always. Till the very end of the age. Yeah, that's what we need right now. <laughs> In the midst of all the trials that the disciples will face, they have this blessed assurance, this triumphant promise that is to sustain them in the good fight. And tonight we'll hear about what it means 
to have the good fight in our spirit and how the good fight is necessary in order to triumph in the world and to have victory in Christ. Tonight, let us take a moment to consider the good fight of John Walton. I want to thank you so much for being a part of our uh, Soul Stories uh, segment. We just believe that we grow when we hear the soul of people. And, you know, just a few minutes ago, the children or the youth of our church read from Matthew um, 28. And, you know, I think we're all called to be disciples. And, and in order to be a disciple, then you, I think that you, God and Jesus in this text is telling you, you're, you're going to struggle, but I'll be with you. You're going to go through some things, but you needn't fear because your walk is under my authority and wherever it takes you and whatever you do, use your life in me, Jesus, to give and expose the good news and the gospel. And so I guess my question to you is throughout your life, do you believe, um, John, that your personal struggles have helped to guide triumph for your personal life and triumph for even family, community, for all of us in some ways? I surely uh, have uh, uh, had my struggles, and, uh, but I don't think I've quite reached that, that victory of, and, and have reached that triumph that I'm, I'm striving for. But uh, I vividly remember uh, all the moments when, when God, I needed God to step in. <laughs> you know, they always say that God may not come when you want to, but he comes right on time. And uh, uh, 25 years ago, uh, I was totally lost. Uh, mm -hmm. I was trying to find a way. I was, um, uh, had, had a bunch of different jobs. Uh, I, I was very good at sales. Uh, one of the talents that, John, uh, that God gave that God gave me was that uh, I was good at sales, and I could sell anything to anybody, black, white, rich, poor. Uh, I sold family portraits, magazine advertising, radio advertising. I even sold tennis shoes to to high school uh, uh, basketball teams, um, but I didn't work for Nike. Uh, <laughs> I, but I I took that uh, that salesmanship. Um, and I, and I used it for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, started to sell drugs. Uh, and there's, you know, I don't know if this is the forum to talk about this. And this has been a struggle for me to even talk about it at all. But there's two ways out of, of selling drugs. Um, you either uh, die or you go to jail. And um, obviously I didn't die. OK, yeah. so uh, as I was standing in front of the judge about to be sentenced, uh, I, I, of course, bowed my head and I started praying again. God, it's me. I'm in trouble again. Yeah. And and uh, I want you to save me again. Um, but this time, God had a different plan. Uh, he wanted to get my full attention. And that judge sentenced me to... Uh, a year in, in, of incarceration. So uh, I spent a, spent a year in jail, but it was during that year when I transformed. Um, mm. uh, I had to uh, realize all the things I had been doing, the lying, the cheating, the stealing. And, and there was one verse, uh, I picked up the Bible, obviously, and there was one verse, uh, which I have on my wall in my office uh, right now, it's Matthew 6.33, that stuck with me seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Um, so I took that one verse and I, I so believed in it uh, that it transformed me into the man I am today. Uh, the seek the kingdom of God part, that was easy. Um, but living righteously, that's what I hadn't been doing. Uh, that's where I failed. And I started to live righteous that day. But the part about that situation that was the darkest was that uh, during that time, uh, my father died. Mm. 
and um, that was that was that was a dark time. But but three months after that, uh, when I was released, uh, I immediately changed my environment. <clears throat> First thing I did is I moved to Minnesota. Um, and I had been reading, you know, things from people like Jim Rohn. And Jim Rohn teaches that if you want to change, you have to change. So I changed my environment. He also teaches that if you want, to, uh, if you want things to get better, you have to get better. Uh, if you want things to improve, uh, you have to improve. And, and eventually you will grow and everything will grow around you. So the second best thing I did uh, in my life was moved to Minnesota. The first best thing, of course, was to father my daughter. So I'm very proud of that. But when I got to Minnesota, I start, had to start my own business because I couldn't, you know, go out and get a job with, with my record. And I was very successful. Like I said, I was very good at sales, but I was also good and had a passion for photography and videography, which obviously I still do. do. Uh, and so uh, I sold my services at malls and, um, uh, went over really well but I remember every month not knowing if I was going to have enough money to pay my rent and and but I stayed the course and um, lived righteously and right on time I'd have just just enough money to pay my rent and I'd be over the top that That's is the that, no, that is such a powerful powerful story of faith and turning things around. You know, the choir sings this song about turn it around and let God open the windows of heaven and blessings will be poured out upon you. Um, I, I stand in admiration and inspiration from what you've come through to where you are. And obviously you said, God's not through with you yet. Right. So it's like, you know, you're living these bookends uh, in Matthew seek ye the kingdom of righteousness. And then at the end of Matthew, it says, now go out into the nation and spread the news, mm -hmm. baptizing people in the name of, of God, giving people all that you have and remembering that whatever you do, Jesus said, I am with you till the end of the age. So it just makes life a full circle of, um, a full circle of support, purpose, faith, and love. And it just appears to me that you have found a way to take what obviously is very painful, the loss of your father while you were incarcerated. That's like doubly painful, I imagine, yeah, as well as the shame that comes from being in that position and you've turned it into good. And we're all blessed by that, right? We're bl I'm blessed by your story. Totally. It was actually the whole the whole um, uh, situation was a total blessing. I just didn't see it coming, but you know God had that plan. I mean, I got to Minnesota. Uh, I I I started working. Uh, I was actually very successful with my business. I actually franchised my business uh, and taught people how to do the same thing I was doing. While I was doing that, uh, this thing called legal videography came out. I went out and got certified at that. Uh, and, and I was working actually in law firms. And as I was in a law firm, one of the law clerks uh, at, uh, asked me if I'd like to work for them mm -hmm. and so said, yeah, absolutely. I was really afraid of what was on my record. And uh, I actually told the HR manager and she said, I'll never forget it. Let's just run your name anyway, because we really want you to work for us. And I, I don't know what happened, but they ran my name and I was good. Uh, they asked me if I could start on Monday. And wow. uh, I started on that Monday and then another software came out called trial director. I went out and got certified at that about this time, the, the technology age took over. And uh, one of my trials was actually in Santa Ana. And I came out here living from living in Minnesota, came out here to Santa Ana for a month. And I thought to myself, whoo, it sure is nice out here. <laughs> so here's how God works. I went out to dinner one night. And it was one of those uh, dinner theaters and they sit you with a different couple. And I was sitting with a strange couple and the lady says, well, what do you do? And I told her I work for a law firm and I, I uh, am a trial consultant. She says, oh, I work for a law firm too. I know exactly what you do. And she said, uh, I think we're, we're going to have an opening uh, pretty soon in that department, which is who I work for today. Wow. That, wow. 
That's how God works. Now, if you would have told me uh, 22 years ago uh, while I was sitting on, on a bunk conversing with some hardened criminals that uh, in 25 years uh, I would uh, own two homes in Southern California, I hear you. Ooh. Yeah. I was thinking about it. Really. It's yeah. Been... yeah. But... Sometimes we have to pause. And I think that when you, um, well, I say the truth sets you free. So the fact that you applied for the position and said, yeah. let's run your name, let's run your background, let's see what happens. I think the truth of your, your testimony and the authenticity, I think yeah. God hears and sees that and, and, and speaks life into that. Because we're not defined by our mistakes. I think we're defined by the way in which we walk from those things to make a difference in the world. And you're obviously making, I know you're making a difference in the world. We, we're blessed by what you do in preparing our worship services every week. And I know that where you work now, they're blessed by um, who you are and who you're becoming and who you're evolving into. Um, but now, you know, we, we stand in this time. So obviously, you know isolation. You know what it means to have a different kind of quarantine, right? <laughs> uh, and, and here we are in this place, in this position of, of, of pain uh, in our society, uh, injustice all around us in this moment. I would ask two things on, on a personal level. How has your own walk and your own journey prepared you for the struggles that we face in our country and in our society? And then the second question I have is, what advice do you have for the community, particularly um, the black community, young black men who, who, who are 25 right now and 26? who are struggling with the realities of the things that they see. Um, any advice that you have for them and for all of us? Question. And uh, I want to be, uh, I really want to be politically correct. Um, but I think there was so much frustration built up yeah. uh, in our society. I, I was frustrated when Michael Brown died. Right. Uh, not just because I'm from St. Louis, he's from St. Louis, but that situation uh, kind of started it all, uh, Trayvon Martin. Uh, so I, unfortunately, George Floyd won't be, he, he's not the first and he probably won't be the last. Yeah. But the, the way society is looking at things now is that they have had enough and I understand their frustrations and, uh, and, and they want to uh, retaliate. Uh, but this is when you need God the most. Uh, and I think, you know, uh, that this COVID is here for a reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see families walking together. You see families playing together. You see everybody that is close to family are spending more time with each other. But um, uh, to get back to your question, uh, my advice to young people is to is to to protest peacefully. Uh, if if we could just keep it peaceful, uh, I I see no no problem with the protest because it is obviously uh, working. Immediately the the officer got charged. Um, uh, the, you saw the governor and his passion, uh, and the mayor of the city and their passion to 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 get justice. Uh, it's time. And, yeah, you, uh, you, know, you know what, John, I see a, a new form of racial reconciliation happening. Um, I, I've seen marches. I've been in marches. I've been in protest rallies. But never have I experienced so many white people standing alongside and saying, we think this is unjust, too. Exactly. And that, exactly. to me, becomes a part of the answer, I think, that we all need to see, that this is not a black community's problem this is a nation's problem and we have to do our part peacefully like you said right peacefully with 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 a firm conviction so that these sort of things don't keep happening wrong is just wrong in my opinion yeah <laughs>
we know right from wrong. We do. We know right from wrong. And, and even the police officers, they know right from wrong. But I think that this incident and the swift uh, punishment on these police officers will cause the rest of the police officers to start to live righteously. Absolutely. I think that you've, you've brought up a good point. I think that between COVID-19 making us appreciate each other as an internal unit, as a family unit, and then the reality that this black man uh, died at the hands of a white cop yeah. in an unfair way gives us all reason to pause for a minute. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we get a story about a man who has used his own struggle and his own story to make a difference in the lives of others, like yourself and so many others. I think it's, who would not be inspired to be better and to do better? So I wanna thank you for your be better and do better because it makes us better. <laughs> and, we, <laughs> and we walk with you and are oh so thankful that you would be strong enough and vulnerable enough to share your real because it helps to make us real in the fight for justice and in the fight to believe that um, we can go out into the nation and spread a good news um, to all. I can't thank you enough for being a part of this. And I, I don't know if you have any closing words that you would like to share, words of encouragement to all of us. Uh, my, my words of encouragement uh, would just be that God has a plan uh, uh, for your life. Uh, and you're walking a path that's been laid out by God. And, you know, there's days you're going to feel sad and there's days you're going to feel lonely. You're going to feel angry, confused, but you got to let it go. And yeah, they say, let go and let God. Once I got out of the way, and yeah. started doing his right way. Absolutely. You know, God bless me in, in so many ways. But, Amen. Uh, I'm thankful. My word for you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And God bless you. And we love you. Thank you. Okay. Wow. What a story. What a witness to how we could and should stand united in living a life of purpose in a world that would make us tend to want to isolate ourselves from those around us. Thank you so much, Mr. John Walton your example, your faith, your fortitude is why we must continue to fight for peace and for justice and for love. It's why we call upon the essence of God's hope to hear the cry of Christ who says we must walk in our purpose in order to pursue a greater justice for all people. Obviously, your living has not been in vain and since yours hasn't been in vain, ours is not in vain either. And our living won't be in vain for George Floyd, for Trayvon Martin, for Breonna Taylor, and for so many more. Because their stories, like John's story, stirs up the soul into being more active in our witness and our advocacy and our active truth that nothing, nothing will stop us from fighting for the justice that we deserve. Thank you again, John Walton. And church, God bless you. May you be inspired and may we continue to walk in the light of hope. We stand at the feast table of hope. In gathering as we are, we know that we are not forgotten, we are not abandoned because of the love that God has for us through Jesus Christ. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. This is exactly why we come to this communion table together, to be unified in the assurance of God's love. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we thank you for this opportunity to share in your love and to share in what it means to be a part of the sacrifice that Jesus Christ took on for our lives. We thank you, Lord, that sin was taken away and replaced 
by unity and peace and love. Help us in taking communion together tonight to remember your love, your witness, and your intention for the world to be drawn to Christ. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus was with his disciples and he took bread and he broke it saying, this is my body broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. And likewise, he took the cup and he poured it saying, this is the new covenant spilled in my blood. Every time you take this cup and you take this bread, you do this in remembrance of me. Friends, let us share in the joy and the celebration of communion. Reggie is going to come and help us with communion for those of you who received pods. He's going to show you how to open them. Take the top off. The body of Christ broken for you. Peel away the bottom layer. The blood of our Lord and Savior poured out for you. May God continue to bless you and keep you. May the light of his love shine upon you. We pray that you're encouraged tonight. New Hope Church. These are tough times. They're tough for everyone, but they're particularly tough for those who are sick, isolated, or suffering financially. And there are those in this congregation who have been furloughed or who have lost hours at work. Despite that, this church is very generous. Although tithes and offerings have been affected, this church continues to give and shows its dedication to the Lord. The stewardship team would like to encourage all of you who are not suffering financially to continue to give consistently. The church doors may be closed, but ministry is still open. And as we know, stewardship is not only about giving. May your light shine, whatever your circumstances. God bless. Hi friends, I just want to share a couple of announcements with you. As you know, New Hope is moving its location to Anaheim, California, and we are so excited about what God has in store for New Hope Church. As the developments unveil, we'll be sharing them with you. You can check us out on our website or you'll be getting information through social media or the mail. Next week, in place of the Holy Hangout, we will have a virtual vigil to not only remember George Floyd, but to consider how we as the church can bring greater advocacy to racial justice. So what we need you to do is bring your candle, your heart, and your mind so that we can have a great discussion and a time of prayer for our country, for our world, for the church, and for God's people. This is hosted by the Social Justice Committee, and you'll get information on how you can be a part. And of course, we have our Bible study. It's on Wednesdays from 12 to 1. We want you to be a part of it as we move into the book of Matthew. And now, without further ado, let us see what's happening with our hand-washing melodies. Ha, I beat you at basketball. Yeah, but you should probably wash your hands. Why? Well, since I already washed mine, I should probably tell you. There's a bunch of germs on your hands, and that can make you really sick. Okay, I'll do it, but only if you sing to me. Sure. Because I'm bored. And, yeah. Okay. Ah, don't forget the soap. Thank you. Wash. 
Wash your hands, oh please, keep your cell safe from COVID-19. Just stay away six feet or say it all for your safety. Make sure to wear a mask outside to stay safe. We can save lives, oh, 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 COVID-19 is not a joke. Just stay home and have some hope, oh, 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 oh. Wash your hands and make sure to stay safe. Have some hope. Pray to our Lord and he will keep us safe. Don't forget, if you're sick, then stay home in bed. So wash your 